Hey guys, if you haven't been living in a hole for the past 10 years, then you've probably heard a lot of people talking about whether or not social media is a good thing or a bad thing. And you have some people that think that social media is the most amazing thing in the world, and other people that think that social media is your worst enemy and it's destroying society and it's destroying your life. And so um, my opinion is that it's both and that it really depends on how you use it. And so I made this video to show you how to use social media in a way that it enhances your life and makes you more productive and more successful rather than ruining your life, which it absolutely has the power to do and has done for a lot of people. So first of all, let's go over why social media is so destructive in some cases and why it's so helpful in other cases. Now, the reasons that I see that social media is destructive and, and absolutely lead some people to suicide, I mean, that's an extreme case, but it, it really destroys people's lives. And so one of the reasons for that is that it stimulates negative emotions and conflict. It stimulates people to be jealous of each other, to be angry towards each other, to be afraid of whatever people are sharing in the news. And in fact, Facebook admitted at one point that it was intentionally sharing negative things, uh, negative news stories and negative posts because those were the ones that got more attention. And in fact, they found that if they could put people into a negative mood, then they would stay longer on Facebook and they would consume more advertising. So these companies are actually actively trying to bring your state down. They are trying to make you uh, unhappy intentionally and they've admitted to this. So that's the first problem. The second problem is that it ruins your attention span. People get so addicted to scrolling through something like Facebook or Instagram where they, they are stimulated by something new every two seconds. Or, uh, you know, TikTok caters to this. Even YouTube is starting to, to cash in on this a little bit. Now YouTube has this news feed where people can, uh, you, you can just scroll through and look at the video titles or people can post their statuses on YouTube now. And so if you get caught in this cycle, then it ruins your attention span and it makes it very difficult to do actual productive work or to actually learn something, to actually sit down and read a book for an hour, or to watch a long video or to go through a course or something it becomes very difficult because you get addicted to this two to 10 second stimulation over and over and over again. And then the third reason I see that social media is so pernicious is that it gets you addicted to low quality experiences, that it just sucks up your time into scrolling through, reading things that oftentimes make you angry, make you jealous, um, make you feel like you are less than other people because you're seeing other people at their best and only at their best. And so you are spending hours and hours and hours of time because this is very addictive, because Every time you get a notification that somebody clicked on your post or every time you learn something scandalous that's going on in somebody else's life, you get that little hit of dopamine and it's very addictive. However, it doesn't make you happy, right? It's taking time away from things that you could be doing that are actually worthwhile, right? It's taking time away from things that are productive and things that are enjoyable. In my opinion, 100% of your time should be doing things that are either productive or enjoyable, that are either creating advancement in your life that are actually helping some something or someone or some cause, or they're things that you do for fun, right? And ideally, you wanna do a lot of things that are both, right? That you should get to a point where what's productive is enjoyable to you, but if you're doing something that is neither productive nor enjoyable, then it's just a complete waste of time, and social media tends to do that to people. And there are two reasons that it, that, that it does that, or two ways that it does that. Number one is through the newsfeed, through being able to just scroll through things um, and have that little one to 10 second experiences over and over and over again that's so addicting. And number two is because of notifications. It, it gives you these notifications saying, hey, open me, open me, take a look here. Look at what somebody liked your profile or somebody, somebody commented on your picture. 
So the notifications cause you to keep going back and going back and going back and getting caught in that addictive cycle. So here you have this perfect stew of, of emotional addiction that makes it uh, so effective at utterly destroying people's lives, and especially people who are are young and don't know better than this. So, you know, I, I if you give social media to your kids, if you give your kids a smartphone with a Facebook profile, um, it does horrible things to them because they don't know that that's what it's doing. They don't know to guard against this. Um, and a lot of adults, too, have not figured this out. So this is why you want to be super careful. But now that I've gone over the negatives, I, I want to go over the positives. You know, I want, to, I want this to be a balance. I'm going to show you how to use social media in a way that you take advantage of the positives, but don't get sucked into this horrible addictive cycle. So why is social media amazing? Well, number one, you can make contact with just about anybody on the planet. Right now, everybody is on social media. So you can meet friends from high school that you haven't seen in 10 years. Um, my, my mom actually got married to her ex-boyfriend whom she really loved and she always always regretted having um, not married him in the past. She found him because of social media, right? So you can make contact with people that you have not been able to talk to for a very long time. You can meet new people that will uh, enrich your life. Um, I met my wife on social media. And you can form business partnerships. You can find customers. There's, it's just amazing how, how it allows you to make contact with people because everybody is there. Second reason it's really helpful is it's a really easy way to share content, right? If you want to be a content creator, maybe you want to be a writer, maybe you want to create videos, it's really easy to write a, a post or of something that's of interest to you and put it out on social media and see how people respond, or to create a short video and see how people respond. It's a really easy way to reach a bunch of people and get almost instant feedback about whether or not people are interested in this. So maybe you write one post and you get 100 likes, and then you write another post and you get three likes. Well, now you have feedback as to what is more interesting to your audience. And then the third reason that social media is so powerful it's because the rest of the world is already addicted to it, right? And obviously, I don't think that's a good thing, but it affords certain opportunities. It allows you to uh, reach people th in mass numbers because they're all there. They're already addicted. They're already scrolling through their news feeds. And so you can use that to your advantage. And in fact, you can use that to help people uh, help build people up, right? And so this is something that uh, that I do with my YouTube channel that you're watching right now, right? I take people that are on Facebook that are in involved in a habit that is not very good for them, and I reach them where they are and I help lift them up, right? I'm showing them how to use Facebook for their benefit instead of letting them destroy their lives with it. I think of it in the same sense as if you want to help people who are in prison to improve their lives, right? Well, in order to do that, you have to go to the prison. The prison is not a nice place. The prison is not where you want people to be, but in order to lift them out, you go where they already are, right? The same thing is true with social media. If you would like to lift them out of that lifestyle of being addicted to low-quality experiences, well, you got to go where they already are, and where they already are is social media. So it makes it uh, a very good place to start with. Okay, so now I, I've gone over in pretty good depth why social media is so destructive, but also why it has so much potential and why it can uh, do wonderful things for you in your life. In particular, if you're a business owner, then it's amazing for business. So let me show you specifically what to do, how to take advantage of all the benefits of social media without falling into the trap of becoming addicted and becoming angry and unhappy, which is honestly what they're trying to do to you. But you, if you use it intentionally and you use it in a smart way, as I'm gonna show you, then you don't have to fall into that. So number one is how to deal with the notifications. The first thing that you wanna do is shut off all notifications outside of the app itself, right? So I'm gonna use a Facebook as, as the example for most of these, but this it's basically the same for every social media platform. 
So on Facebook, there are three kinds of notifications. There are um, phone notif push notifications, I think they're called, which will give you a notification on your phone when you're not using the app. There are email notifications which send you an email. If somebody comments on your post or someone sends you a friend request or something, they send you an email. And then the third are in-app notifications. That's the little, little bell thing on the top that you click and it gives you your list of notifications about how people who liked your, your comments or whatever. And so um, what you wanna do is you wanna turn off any notifications that occur outside of the app, outside of the Facebook app or the Instagram app or whatever you're using. So you wanna turn off all email notifications unless something, there's something that's really important to you, like a new event comes up and, and you wanna know about that new event, something like that. But other than that, turn off all outside notifications. So that means all email notifications and all push notifications because those are the things that are addictive to get you back into the app when you're not already in it. Second thing is checking your social media. It gets really easy to become addicted to every 30 seconds you're picking up your phone to check what's on your social media, to check if you got any new notifications, to check what other people have on their newsfeed. Now for obvious reasons, you don't wanna do this. You don't wanna fall into this cycle because it makes it very difficult to do anything productive because it, it ruins your attention span. So what you need to do is you need to set a rule for yourself about how many times per day you are going to check your social media. And so for me, I set that to once. I say, I'm going to check my social media once per day. I'm gonna go through my notifications once per day and that's it, no more than that. Now, you can make an exception for when you have something specific to do on social media. So let's say that you want to um, make a post in a group or, or you want to record a video, a live video or, or something like that, right? That doesn't count. I'm just talking about checking, just opening your phone to see if anything happened. That's it. Or on your computer or whatever device you're using. So my rule for myself is I will check once per day. Now, I would highly recommend that you also have an alternative behavior when, especially if you're already addicted. So I was at the point, um, for a while where I, I would check my Facebook or my Instagram just compulsively, constantly. Like I would be driving in the car and every single time I got to a red light, I would check my, my Instagram. Uh, or I'd be watching TV and I would check my, my phone like multiple times throughout the same TV program. Uh, it was ridiculous. And so finally what I did is I said, okay, I'm, I'm wasting so much time. I'm destroying my ability to pay attention. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna only check once per day and every other time that I feel the need to check, I'm gonna pick up a book instead. I'm gonna read something that's gonna actually contribute to my life instead of wasting my time and my attention span on Facebook. And so that's what I did. Every time I was tempted to check my phone, I would pick up a book and start reading. And so that uh, got, cured me of my addiction completely and I read a lot of stuff that was really useful and I, I got really into reading and that has absolutely transformed my life. So set a rule for yourself how often you're allowed to check. I recommend no more than twice per day at, at the very most and then have some alternative. Um, and if you, if you do what I did, have a book ready, right? Or have a few books ready that are interesting to you that are things that you wanna learn that are going to actually improve your life and have those readily available so that when you get that compulsion to check your um, Facebook or Instagram or whatever, it becomes really easy to just grab that book instead. Okay, so that's the second thing. Third thing is the news feed. The news feed is this horrible invention they came up with that makes everybody sad and angry and depressed all the time because that's how their algorithm works. That is what they are intentionally trying to do. So, the best thing that you can do about the news feed is ignore it completely, right? Whenever you're looking at a news feed, you're getting whatever they want you to see. You have no intention behind it. You're just kind of, uh, just kind of a slave to whatever they want your mind to go to. Um, and so I highly recommend that you just ignore it. Don't ever look at the news feed. If you're interested in how a particular person is doing, go directly to their profile and look at their profile. Um, if you have an intention for everything that you do, 
on social media. Don't ever just sit there and scroll. And in fact, for Facebook, you can get an app that blocks the news feed. I, I don't remember exactly what it's called, just news feed blockers or news feed eradicator. I think that's what it was called. And so if you, if you get addicted easily, like I do, <laughs> whenever I see the news feed, I always want to comment or, or just keep scrolling or something. It's, it's really crazy how addictive it is. Um, get something that, the, get an app that, that gets rid of that news feed so that you don't even have that temptation in the first place. Now, there is one sort of exception to this rule, and that is YouTube or, you know, Odyssey or BitChute or whatever video app you happen to be using. Uh, with those, they have a news feed of, of, that's usually new videos or videos that you might be interested in. Now, for those, I found a lot of those videos very helpful, actually. So this is, this is kind of a gray area because you're not being intentional. You don't really have control over what you're seeing. But on the other hand, they do a pretty good job of showing you the sort of videos that you're likely to be interested in. So it, you might actually come across some really good content because of that news feed on YouTube. So that's one where just just be cognizant, right? You note, notice if you're just kind of scrolling addictively uh, because you have nothing better to do, that's usually a bad thing. But if you're actually finding videos that are really helpful and interesting to you, then it can be a good thing. So just be careful with that one. Okay, now the fourth thing that you can do that's actually really helpful on Facebook is to make partners and join groups. Basically find people who are like-minded, who are interested in the same things that you are, who are going to encourage you and help you with your goals. And the Facebook groups are really good for that. And you can find people in those groups or just among your Facebook friends that you have to begin with who have interesting things to share, who have useful things to share that when you look at their content, it actually edifies you, it actually builds you up, it actually makes your life better, right? So instead of just scrolling through newsfeed, when, if you want to check something other than your notifications, check your partners, go to specific people's profiles or go to specific groups. When you have groups that are actually useful for, um, and there are a lot of those groups actually that post really good stuff that's actually going to help you. And especially if you have a group that's structured in such a way that it, um, it gives you accountability and it gives you structured training to achieve something in your life, then that's extremely helpful. And by the way, I just started a group on Facebook, which um, I have created according to everything that I'm telling you here. It's, it's structured, it gives you training, um, it gives you accountability, it helps you to network and find partners that are going to help uplift you and help you uh, reach your goals. That group is called Career Hackers. I will put a link in the description below if you're interested in checking that out. That's all about how to upgrade your career to have the, the career that you truly desire. Right, and there we take a very unique approach to it, um, and I'll I, I won't go over all of the details of that, but check out the group if you're interested in that. It's it's if you are looking for more with your career, and that could be your job or your own business, then absolutely join that group. You'll find it extremely helpful. Okay, so now the next two ways, the five and six, I put stars beside these because these are for business owners. These are ways to use. Facebook if you want to have a business. Now, when I say a business, it doesn't necessarily have to be a big corporation with employees and, um, and capital and, and all of this. It could be just, maybe you just have a blog. Maybe you want to be a writer. Maybe you're a musician. Uh, anything where you're trying to promote yourself to the world uh, is a business in terms of what I'm talking about here. So the fifth way to use this, and the first way to use it as a business, is to be a producer of comment and uh, content rather and not a consumer. And notice I put prod, sir, and it's supposed to be you in there. <laughs> be a producer and not a consumer, right? When you're going through a news feed, when you're checking, when you're looking at your notifications all the time, that's consumer behavior. You're, you're consuming the product that is Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Whereas if you're a producer, what you're doing is you're creating content. You're 
posting things that are going to be interesting to people, that are going to uh, get them to know, like, and trust you, and want to buy from you, etc. You're making videos that are helpful to you, that make them want to follow you, um, that make them like you better so they're more likely to buy your products, etc. Always think about when you are on social media, am I acting like a producer or am I acting like a consumer? Try to always act like a producer rather than a consumer. And then the last thing is to advertise. Social media is awesome for advertising because everybody's there and everybody's addicted, right? So there are people that are scrolling through their newsfeed, reading things that are making them angry and making them depressed and, and basically destroying their lives. Well, you could advertise a service that's going to make their life better and disrupt that pattern, right? Because they're already there, you can sell if you have a business or even if you're a musician, you want to sell your music or you want to sell your art or you have, like me, I do coaching programs. I advertise on social media a lot. So instead of sitting there wasting their life being angry on social media, they get an ad from me all about how they can learn a new skill or a new um, industry or a new business that can improve their lives. And they click on that and then I, I'm taking them away from the negative pattern of social media to a, pattern, a positive pattern of learning to improve their lives. So advertising is, is awesome on social media because everybody is there and because everybody's sharing their information. So you can target exactly the sort of people that are likely to be interested in whatever it is that you have to offer. So that's it. If you will follow these steps, these first four steps, if you are not a business owner and all six steps, if you are a business owner, that will make your social media experience so much re more rewarding, so much more satisfying, and will improve your life uh, greatly overall. Now, again, if you're interested, I just started this new Facebook group. It's called Career Hackers. It's all about improving your career without having to ask permission. So most people, they think in order to uh, improve their career, they need some sort of credentials. They need some new degree or they need some new certification or something. This is saying, no, in order to improve your career, all you have to do is figure out what you want, figure out what you need to learn in order to get there, and then learn it. Now with the power of the internet, we can learn just about anything that we could possibly want. Like everything that you need to reach the career of your dreams is at your fingertips at every moment. So all you really have to do is find a plan to get there. You can find the information you need, you can find the support and the mentorship that you need because you can access any person just about on the internet. Um, you can access any, inf any information on the internet. And so it's a group all about taking your career into your own hands, figuring out exactly what you want and doing what it takes to go get it. And then it's also a community of people who support each other. So. If you've noticed whenever you've tried to make something better of your life, probably a lot of people try to pull you down. In fact, maybe even the people that are close to you, maybe even your own family, they try to tell you why, oh, well, that's never gonna work, why um, it's not gonna work for you because you're not the right kind of person, why you don't have the right personality or the right skill set to do that, right? This is how people treat each other just kind of by nature. And sometimes it's jealousy, other times it's, it's just, they're just trying to keep you safe. They don't want to see you be disappointed and they're convinced that you're just a useless idiot who's never going to get anywhere. And so obviously that, that sort of attitude is not helpful at all. And so what I've done with this group is I'm making it the opposite. This is a group, a community of people who support each other, who help each other, who encourage each other, and who network with each other instead of trying to pull each other down like most people do. So again, if that's something that you're interested in, go ahead, click the link in the description, and we would love to have you in the group. So I hope this was helpful to you. If so, uh, please hit the like button, leave me a comment, and of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. So that's it, and I'll see you soon.